Hey there, dirt bike people. I'm Chuck from TrueTech. I just finished doing the bottom end on this 2020 300RR. I did an NJ206 left side crank bearing update. If you want to see that video, it's up here. Now I'm going to assemble the right side or clutch side. Here we go. Very straightforward. So it's very tempting to install the clutch first. Installing the clutch first is a bad idea because you can't install anything else. So clutch always last. Once your bench is empty, then you can install the clutch. This is a good time to install the starter. If you watched the last video, you'll know that I don't have a complete gasket set for this because they're on back order and the OEM ones are $280. So I am reusing some of the gaskets. There is a little bit of lubrication on this O-ring already. It's very easy to damage an O-ring if you don't have lubrication on it so it doesn't slide. A little bit of blue Loctite on these bolts is a good idea. This is the primary drive gear. I've already got the collar in there and the O-ring and a new right side crank seal. I'm gonna line up this Woodruff key and there's a dot right there. That dot corresponds with the dot on the counterbalancer right there. A Loctite on this counterbalancer bolt is pretty critical because this takes a lot of the vibration from the motor and dissipates it. Hold on to the crankshaft there or the connecting rod. If you've seen other engine build videos that I've done, you will have heard this. I know my impact really well. If you don't know your impact very well, torque that bolt. If you're torquing that bolt, you'll want to use a piece of aluminum or copper and just jam it between the gears and you can torque that. And if you're doing that, you're probably going to be torquing this primary nut as well. This is left hand thread, put a bit of blue Loctite on it. If you want to know why I don't torque bolts, I haven't made the video yet, but by the time this video comes out, I will have made it. So check the link up there if you want to know why I don't torque bolts. Uh, there's this circlip goes here on the output shaft of the transmission. Now I'm going to reach under, push the output shaft up, and then push that circlip down into its groove. Now this right side clutch cover has got one dowel pin there and I got one in my hand here. Normally this would be a little different, but like I say, I'm not changing this clutch cover gasket. Now that inner race, now I can put the outer hub on. Now there's always drop in inner hub, start with friction. Now I am not 100% sure if this is the stock clutch. A lot of the betas have a judder spring. This one doesn't have it. So this might be an aftermarket set of plates, but I'm not 100% sure on that. If yours is a little different, let me know in the comments. Sorry, this lock tab washer has a cutout on this side where this little tab goes. So I'm gonna drop that in there. This is right hand thread. The Loctite that was on that nut was providing a bunch of resistance, which is one of the reasons why torquing is not effective. If you do want to torque it for some reason, you need to remove all of that Loctite or else you're going to get an inaccurate number. Now I could put this clutch rod in, but it's just going to fall through. So I'm going to put it in after I install the engine in the bike. A little bit of Loctite, just a little bit. These are M6 fasteners. You don't want them all stuck in there. The Loctite helps with mitigating the effects of vibration. I'm just going to run these in, and then I'm going to tighten them by hand. It's quite easy to break those little towers off, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like torquing. Now, on my reused gasket here, it's quite common to reuse an inner clutch cover gasket. This one's in excellent condition. I'm not worried at all. Now, I haven't disassembled any of this power valve stuff here. I was changing the crank bearings on this, and the rest of the engine is in good shape. So. I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time taking things apart that I don't need to. Be very careful with this gasket. It's very easy to have it get dislodged. These bolts are all gonna stick out a uniform distance. These two have the dowel pin in them, so those two will be longer. Now again, I'm gonna run these in. Ooh, that one is providing a bit of resistance. Okay, yeah, just a little bit of gunk stuck in there. I don't like it. So I've got a fix for this. Learned this years ago during my apprenticeship. Got a bunch of bolts here just with a slot cut in them. And when there's junk stuck in the threads, I run those down. Oh yeah, I can feel it. There's some stuff stuck in there. Now check that out. See, there's a bunch of stuff that has been caught up in that slot. Now, nice. Big difference. 
that bolt goes in there nice and easy. Now I'm going to finish them all by hand. I've got my water pump housing thing in here. I'm going to put some grease in that seal, clean this O-ring, put some grease on it as well. Now I'm reusing this gasket as well, which is why some of this dirt is staying on here. I don't want to disturb it. Now this is an O-ring, so no big deal there. My little washer and the impeller. Just a dab of Loctite on that bolt. I'm going to hold my connecting rod, just tighten this up by hand. Finish off those water pump bolts, which are also part of the inner clutch cover. So since I've tightened this area down a little bit more, I'm going to check the adjacent bolts. All good. My bench is empty of parts. Good to go. If you like my content, you can find it here on YouTube on Instagram, and sometimes on Facebook and TikTok, although I don't really like those platforms. If you want to support what I do while getting extra value for yourself, you can join my True Tech community where you'll find interactive courses, a discussion group, a bunch of free manuals and troubleshooting flowcharts. I'll include a link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching.